It's a city where anything can happen. So what can go wrong or right as I hit up LA Unscripted? We live in a city with endless things to do, people to meet, and we want to do it all with you. Hi everyone, I'm Dana Devon, and consider LAU your tour guide to all the must-dos and have-to-tries around town. And no matter if you've lived here for years or just moved here, we'll bet there's a few finds that will be new to you too. How's it going, Jenny? Good, how are you? Doing all right. The epiphany for me was uh, I was in advertising for 35 years. This has been a passion of mine forever, and I really, I was planning on doing something with burgers. Regular burger or the fried onion burger? Being laid off, I kind of forced myself to start this business on the sidewalk. A regular double with chili on the side. I live a block away. I used to roll my griddle from my house to the sidewalk over here when I started. I had a couple tables, didn't even have an easy up or anything. And then as the business grew, I was able to get the easy ups. I designed and built these carts to carry our gear out of the, the new van I have here. My original burger is simple, just straight cheese, meat and bun. I don't even know how to explain it. I just. I just love this burger, you know? you know? I was grinding at home on my own. I just kind of played around with different combinations until I landed where I am today. It was just experimentation at home, and I think that's what makes my burger unique here in LA. Only a three stack today, huh? I don't add sauces to it. I, I pretty much recommend people just kind of try it as is. It's a really, it's got a smoky steak kind of flavor to it. What I've learned since I've started is, uh, A, I was never in the restaurant business prior to this. I had zero restaurant experience, food service experience. And you said no drinks, right, Sam? Yeah. Okay. The community that I've, I've come to know and love, this pop-up community that I've, I've become friends with, has been a tremendous help in helping me educate myself on how to run my pop-up, but also to share and appreciate all the other pop-ups in LA that you know, we've since become friends with. I just seen a food truck and I passed by it and ever since then I've been coming by here weekly and I bring my friends by here and they all love it. I think what uh, makes me do this every day is uh, A, being able to serve a burger that I love and also my customers. I have fantastic customers that return every week to come get our burgers. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Jesse! From the valley to the ocean, the mountains, the desert, and everything in between, there are so many incredible enclaves to discover in Southern California. So let's see what our Jasmine Simpkins is up to. Hello, my name is Peggy Simonian, and I'm the owner of Lucky Baldwin's Pub. It's originally named after a man called Elijah Baldwin. Uh, his nickname was Lucky. He was a pioneer, came across to San Francisco. He was a gambling man and he won a lot of money. Lucky Baldwin's as an establishment has been in the city of Pasadena for many, many years. Originally it was a sandwich shop. My business partner and I, David Farmworth, we uh, bought the business in 1996. In those days, nobody was really drinking beer. They were more into wine. Uh, so we were the pioneers here of the Belgian beer movement. We did many beer events. We got dressed up uh, as monks, and we've been doing that ever since. In order to get onto our tap list, it's very difficult. We pick and choose who we want to feature. We've got 65 different taps here. I also heard you were knighted, which That's is right. a big deal. It is, it is a very big deal. Uh, in Belgium, they recognize you as somebody that is promoting Belgian beer here outside of Belgium. So uh, in 2015, I was invited to go and get knighted by the brewer's mash star. Well, Peggy, you know I've got to taste some of your world-famous beer since I'm here. I'll be pouring a couple of Belgian beers. The first one being Pirat. 
The second one being Delirium Tremens. Both very popular beers. This is really good. Oh my gosh. It's, and I feel like it goes really good with these dishes. It does. We do cater to a primarily a British food menu. Uh, we serve breakfast, lunch and dinner. We serve uh, full English breakfast on the weekends. Uh, with the traditional Irish bacon and English bangers. Our traditional fish and chips. This is our number one seller that everybody comes here for. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's made with beer batter. Mm -hmm. Our batter is very crunchy and crisp. And the fish is Icelandic cod. It's so it's good. A lot of people know of Lucky Baldwin's uh, all across the United States and overseas as well. All sorts of people come here to celebrate and to have a good time. So it's just always a good energy here. Okay, so tell us where to go next, because by now you know I am Dana, down to do it all, unscripted, especially if you dare me. There's a really great artisanal perfume culture here on the West Coast that doesn't really exist anywhere else in the States. I'm Christopher Gordon from the Perfumer Studio in Hollywood. Dana, I dare you to make a signature scent. We create the fragrances, and that fragrance can be used in anything from candles to body scents to room sprays. Our goal was to make perfumery accessible to anyone, whether they wanted to become a perfumer themselves or whether they just wanted to create their own signature scent. I accept your dare. I am gonna learn to be a nose just like you, right? I think everyone should have a scent that they like to wear that makes them happy, confident, uh, feel dressed and ready for the day. Mimosa. <laughs> I wanna smell that one. <laughs> No, just like yesterday. Oh. <laughs> scent is one of the most powerful senses that we have. And even between people, a person can wear the same fragrance and have it smell different than their best friend because their skin is different, because they may have dry skin. It's a different diet even that can affect the smell. You know how in um, a wine tasting, they'll have like something to cleanse your palate? Mm -hmm. Do you have things like that that will cleanse your palate? Really the best thing to do is to smell your own skin where you don't have like. any fragrance on. <laughs> Coffee beans don't really work, they're just another volatile scent. How do we get started? So we get started by choosing one of these base fragrances. Okay. Uh, we've got a selection of feminine, uh, unisex, and masculine fragrances. I definitely think I like sweeter. Okay. Yeah. So I would suggest Central Gourmand. Because I am one. If we write down the formula, but we keep this on file. Okay. So if you fall in love with it, oh, you can always you can come keep... back. We're gonna do 30 drops of that. So Central Gourmand is here. Now when I count, I'm gonna do it very sensual. One. Oh, that's not a drop. Oh, it's not? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's add some of the jasmine. Let's do 12. So we offer a quick two and a half hour Saturday class a couple times a month where people just come in because they want to make a perfume. They've thought about it, they love perfume. After that we have a foundation in perfumery which is geared towards people who want to go into the business. They want to become perfumers. So it's more in depth, it's a few days long. So we give that a little shake, mix the oils in, and now we're going to smell the final creation. The moment of truth! I'm so excited. It smells delicious. It smells amazing. I'm gonna wear this every day. Wear it in good health. Yeah, thank you. Done. Cheers. Oh my God, that was so cool. And we are just getting started. LA Unscripted will be right back. Welcome back to LA Unscripted, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and we want to know how you live life unscripted. 
I mean, what does that even mean? Well, to us, it's going outside of our comfort zones, discovering new places and meeting people that make SoCal so special. Yeah, so it's gonna be here and then uh, the shading, uh, I'll connect it with the skyline. Mm -hmm. That way it can look like everything's just one piece. The first time that I did a tattoo, it was about uh, 13 years ago. And when I did the first tattoo, I just felt like, man, that's, that's cool, you know, I can put my art on someone, you know? I was actually born in uh, Michoacan, Mexico. Came over here when I was eight. We grew up right here in Pomona, it was a little bit rough. I got into the tattooing industry. I never even, nobody in my family had a, their own business. I remember I tried to apply for jobs around the tattoo shops around the area and nobody would, no, nobody would give me a job. I was just like, I'm just gonna open my own shop. My name is Jose Gijosa, owner of Killer Tattoos. My true passion is doing dire tattoos. I'm about to reveal the championship ring. I became a big uh, Dyer fan. I started decorating the shop with uh, a lot of Dyer banners. Customers started seeing that we love the Dyer, so they started coming asking for Dyer tattoos. And I've done from just the little LA logo all the way to uh, the whole Dodger Stadium. About eight years ago, I did a Dodger Stadium on uh, one of my friends on the side of the head. That one was super detailed. I remember I finished like at three in the morning. Uh, I posted it on uh, social media and right away it just went viral, it blew up. I wanted the stadium with some, with the piece of LA, because it, it's just, it's home. I didn't grow up in LA, but it, it just, Dodgers is home to me. I saw his Dodger work and I knew he was the guy who had to do my tattoo. I'm hoping I get to tattoo a Dodger player that's uh, having tattooed no MLB players yet. Hopefully I get to tattoo one. And that's like uh, my dream right now. And now for all things on trend, our partner Anya Saar with her Style Smart sponsors. that time of year again back to school how did we get here and as a style smart mom i may have given sawyer's room a little makeover in my and his dad's alma mater colors what do you think mom i haven't even started third grade yet well it's never too early to show your school spirit the idea is mixing and matching for school colors. It just Love turns it. out beautifully, as you can see. I thought I went all out in my USC room with my peach skin sheets, because I used three different colors. And with 24 colors, I'm gonna have the swatches in front of me. With 24 colors, you can match any school that you may be going to. Absolutely. So when you get your acceptance letter, whether it's college or kindergarten, doesn't really matter these days, you, you immediately make the bed in the peach skin sheets from that color to surprise everyone, correct? Yes, we actually had a customer that surprised their family at Christmas with the school that they got into by having everybody open up sheet sets that were in the school colors and the dad had gone to the school, he was an alumni, and he was just so thrilled, and it just made it so much fun. Let's talk about the students who are going away to school, and like you said, they might feel homesick, but also, as we're transitioning from summer to fall, everyone's having some skin issues, right? Yes. So yes. let's talk about the importance of the peach skin sheet pillowcase and how yes. that is for skin issues. Our fabric is the best for sensitive skin, um, you know, just really any kind of skin. Peach skin sheets are great for your skin because they're antimicrobial and you're less likely to get any kind of bacterial infection back onto your skin from your own sheets. Board certified dermatologist. I have my own practice, Bella Skin Institute in Calabasas, California. I like sleeping on peach skin sheets. They are soothing, smooth, they're not wrinkled. They're very breathable, comfortable. Those are my favorite sheets and that's what I recommend to my patients. Back to school is a very stressful time for everyone. Breakouts are pretty common 
And we know that if you don't change your sheets often enough that you might be more prone to breakouts. If your sheets are sealing in that moisture and you're getting really sweaty and you're waking up in the middle of the night a bunch of times, that's promoting stress and stress increases cortisol in your body and makes you break out. It's best to have breathable sheets that wick moisture away to give you your best night's sleep. That in addition to a clean pillowcase and of course, Miracle Cream to spot treat any breakouts that pop up. This product is something we had in our practice for 10 years. I found a way to make it soothing, reduce bacteria, and also reduce redness and swelling in the breakouts so that it has all the aspects you need and it's also mattifying so your skin looks less greasy. Putting that all together, we want to have smooth skin, smooth sheets, and just feel our absolute best when we go back to school this season. We're gonna play a speed round of true or false peach skin sheet style. True or false, peach skin sheets are the softest sheets in the world. That's a true with a capital T. True or false, you don't have to have kids or even kids going to school to just set up your bed in your favorite team. That is so true. I mean, what a great gift for someone who's like a diehard fan of whatever team. True or false, do you have the most exclusive discount code just for my viewers on LA Unscripted today? I do, Anya. Use code STYLESMART for 24-24-24. That's 24% 24 off all 24 colors and sizes for 24 hours and you just visit peachskinsheets.com. That's what I love about this show, making everything and every moment special. All right, speaking of, we have to take a short break, but hey, why don't you scroll through our Instagram while we're split up? That way you won't miss us as much. That's right, it's at, at KTLA Unscripted. Go ahead, double tap that post. You know you want to. We love LA. There's just so much to discover, so you'll definitely want to bookmark this. The Valley Relics Museum is a museum and event space based in Van Nuys, California. Our mission is to preserve the local history of the valley. We have lots of neon, we have cars, we have a free play arcade. Uh, just lots of artifacts, Hollywood memorabilia, really, really amazing, cool, visually impressive stuff that we have from all over the valley and from Los Angeles in general. Ralph, one of the coolest part of this museum, I think, is the cars, and especially the one we're sitting in right now. What is this van? This is a Volkswagen Microbus, which was used in the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This is the actual bus? This is the actual bus. What that is, is a wall of televisions that we rescued from Jack Webb's house. Jack Webb was the producer of Adam 12 and Dragnet and uh, Emergency 911, I think was the name of the show. They are from the 70s and they are Sony Trinitrons and um, they are working televisions. I've spent a lot of time keeping them going. Ralph, this area has a special place in your heart, am I right? It does indeed. My family and I ran and owned the Family Fun Arcade in Granada Hills for nearly 40 years. It became the iconic place that so many people have come back and said to us, it was like cheers of the arcade world. It's a free play arcade that is available for anyone who comes to the museum. This area is curated by Julianne Rehm, and she has done a wonderful job of bringing in and displaying memorabilia from the early stages of film in Los Angeles. And a lot of people don't know that the Valley was kind of, it was a hub for that kind of thing. It was also a hub for a lot of the stars. Uh, Clark Gable, John Wayne lived here, and the Valley was kind of their escape from Hollywood. It's important for us to preserve this history because a lot of people don't know how important the San Fernando Valley is. Whether it be aerospace, BMX, 
uh, sound equipment and really spillover for Hollywood. So much came out of this place and it really doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. And now, what's cooking with Jess? I'm not one usually for the craft cocktail. I, I'm a rosé girl or maybe a Prosecco in the summer, or something like that. But um, this drink I think would be a fun one to make if you have guests over, make a picture of it. A couple of ice cubes I've got at the bottom of my blender. Just to make life easy, I bought already cut up watermelon, but you certainly could cut it up yourself. It kind of reminds me of maybe an agua fresca, right? Which is just kind of a, a water-like texture, but it smells like watermelon. Now to that, I'm gonna add fresh mint. A couple of handfuls. And you don't wanna start it from the beginning with the mint because it'll, it'll get too mixed up. I just want a quick chop of the mint. Tequila, I've got, I like the Casamigos, but I don't really know much about tequila. So, our watermelon mint juice. Oh, this is the hard part, a bunch of lime. I'm gonna do salt and sugar rim. And then you take a lime and you go like this. Usually I only do it on half quarter of the glass. I don't do it all the way around. Beautiful. We'll put in our ice cubes, stir our watermelon mint margarita. Look at this, how pretty. A splash of Perrier. Cheers. That's really good. Okay, that is it for now. Thank you so much for joining us on another adventure around town. What's our next stop? You never know. We'll see you next time. <laughs>